What I just described, it's the equivalent of you guys, you run the podcast, but now you adopt the Bitcoin standard. And whenever you make money, you invest it in Bitcoin. And then when you go to an investor and they want to invest in the podcast and they want to give you a million dollars or $10 million, you say, why don't you give me $50 million? I'm going to invest it in Bitcoin and the podcast. Okay. And at some point you're still doing the podcast, but Bitcoin's going up 20% a year and you're making 20, $30 million a year on the, on the treasury, but you're, you have an endowment and you're going to do your podcast. Like, should you do that? Yeah. It's crypto fam. Welcome back to the channel. Aaron here from Bitcoin bros coming back at you with another cryptocurrency video. And you saw in that clip, that was Michael Saylor right there. And in today's clip, he'll be talking about how to optimize your business as an entrepreneur. We're going into a new world order. The world is changing right before our eyes. And he talks about how you can take advantage of that over the next five to 10 years and become a 10X to 100X bigger business. Let's go ahead and see what Michael has to say here and leave all your thoughts in the comments section below. My advice to an entrepreneur is you've got a business, think of, think of your business with a P&L, and then your balance sheet. If your balance sheet has money, if you have money on the balance sheet and you're investing it in uh, treasury bills, you're generating 3% after tax, but the cost of capital is 12%. So you're losing 9 to 10% of your treasury every year in shareholder value. So you've just jacked into a parasitic system, which is sucking the life out of you. You're being bled to death. And the simple fix there is flip the treasury asset from one that's dilutive 10% a year, the one that's accretive 10% a year. If, if Bitcoin goes up 24% a year and the cost of capital is 12, right, then you're doubling your treasury every three years instead of cutting your treasury in half, mm -hmm. right? That's a very simple um, a very simple thing, but that doesn't change how you run the P&L. What you did is you plugged into a technology platform to make you more powerful. To, to, to basically preserve or increase your capital. On the P&L, the answer is you plug into a technology platform that makes your product or your service more powerful. So it depends on what your product and service is, but you know it's, it's simple. If you're a podcaster, right? You think about where are the eyeballs and, and what is the format you know, you could create an audio only format or you could create video and audio. And if you create video and audio, then you make the best quality video and audio you can, which means that you get on a plane, you've traveled to the mm. person you want to interview and you set up the cameras and if the light's bad, fix the light, create the product, right? So you create the right product, then you put it on the right channel. And then, and there you focus upon building that, uh, that viewership. So if, if you spread yourself too thin and you kind of create a product which is inferior for 10 different channels, then maybe that's not as good as creating an, a, an awesome product for one or two or whatever channels. Obviously, if you want to go on TikTok, you create TikTok content. You take this, you splice it into 15, 30 second TikTok videos and you run it. If you want to run an Instagram, you create real content. On YouTube, it's smart to make sure you, you know, make it YouTube friendly, put in the timestamps, put in the description. You know, people, some people are stupid, like right? they'll, they'll post a podcast video and they're like, they'll like not enable comments and then they'll put the wrong header in it and they have a famous name and a famous topic. You wouldn't say, you wouldn't say we interviewed a dude about the problems in the economy. You would say we interviewed Michael Saylor about Bitcoin right. because really, my name trends yeah. and you're just focusing on creating a great product. You know, and you're asking the question, like you're saying, like, how do we use AI, right? How do I use AI to, to create a better show for, you know, when this thing comes out, it'll be in English, you know, you can actually translate mm -hmm. it to Spanish and Portuguese, and maybe you capture the Spanish and the Portuguese market. If you actually have content and, you know, or yeah. Korean or Japan. So if I was a podcaster. I'd be thinking hard about the channel and the platform. I'd be thinking hard about creating content that's global. I'd be thinking hard about how I format it in the right form factor that drives the maximum engagement, the maximum likes, right? All, all of those things. And of course, every year the technology shift, right? Like is Ali, you know, is is Alibaba or TikTok coming and going? Is Alibaba coming and going? Is, you know, and then not even just AI, but 
if you do an AI and it translates garbage, and there's another AI that will actually create a good Spanish lang language translation, then obviously find the right one. And I would say probably in this era, you got to allocate 10, 20% of your time to just considering the changes in the technology landscape. Can an AI drive your car? Do you sell cars? Can the, you know, can you put AI on your robot? Can you build a robot? Will a robot build what you're, will someone create what you're creating? Yeah. Right. And, and so there's a defensive, there's an offensive, and then you're reinventing yourself. But, the model, the model I've always had, and I, I had the, uh, you know, uh, one of these fossils on my wall, you know, my office for a while. It's a, a chambered nautilus, and a chambered nautilus represents a really good model for entrepreneurial growth in business because it's a creature, a mollusk that you know lives deep down and under high pressure, and it creates a shell. And then it's growing, and as it's growing, it's creating a geometrically larger shell, but it's creating it by turning in on itself. So it's always using its previous work as the foundation for its next, its next work, which is twice as much. So it's like, it's, it's the Fibonacci sequence. It's a one and a two and a four. It's, it's going to spiral out like this. And when you look at the creature, what you say is that is nature's solution to growth under pressure or disciplined growth because it's always building on its past asset, its past foundation. It's not just, I've got this and I reach over here. This gets snapped off mm -hmm. under pressure, right? Whereas this, this spiral or chambered nautilus that actually has integrity under pressure. That doesn't get crushed by the weight. And in your business, you know, if you're taking an asset, like for example, maybe you've got a body of content, good podcast, but you've never been in the in the Brazilian market, and you figure out how to translate everything to Portuguese. But you know, you try that in the Brazilian market, you know. Do you want to go learn Portuguese and then just restart, you know, or work twice as hard interviewing Portuguese people for the Portuguese market and Portuguese and interviewing English speakers for the English market? And you're like, well, you know, you can see how that becomes uh, too many balls and you drop the balls. And pretty soon you're you're not using technology to do something a thousand times cheaper or or a thousand times better. You're just trying to do twice as much. And growth growth that relies upon you working twice as hard isn't sustainable. You, you need to find a way to use your assets, but be the first person to a new platform with these assets. If you hypothetically, for example, if you could create an AI that would look at your podcast and automatically generate 27 short reels that run on TikTok and Instagram that then drag that pulled the most exciting thing said and then dragged people in 37 languages to 37 full full podcasts and that was all done in the 30 minutes after you yeah. finished each podcast by the AI mm -hmm. that's pretty good you know sometimes i think i'll get on twitter and i'll say something I'll do stuff and it'll run 500,000 video views and I, I can accomplish more in five minutes than if I had a marketing team of 40 people and a $20 million a year budget. Yeah. And in fact, I would say sometimes if I gave you a $40 million a year budget and 40 or 50 people and 10 lawyers, they would all come together to tell you you can't do anything. Yeah. You get less done by trying to do things the conventional way. And then the new way. So, so I think with entrepreneurs on the PNL, you're just always looking for how you how you harness platforms. And the two most powerful ideas right now this year: digital money, digital intelligence. Right, those are breaking. Right, uh, digital intelligence is AI. It really wasn't commercial two years ago. We're like in year one, year two of a ten year run, mm -hmm. and magical things will happen that were that were written about in science fiction books 50 years ago. But, you know, the way science works and S-curves work is people will talk about doing things for 100 years and they'll never do it. And then the year before it becomes feasible, people will think it isn't, but then it will be. And all of a sudden, you're on an S-curve and the entire world changes over the next 10, 20 years. 
the automobile, the airplane, mm-hmm. et cetera. And so right now we're at the beginning of a massive S curve in digital intelligence. And the same is true with money. So if you were trying to do things a conventional way on your balance sheet or a conventional way with your P&L, this is a good time for you to rethink that because either it will make you 10 times or 100 times more successful or it'll keep you from being torn apart by the challenger that uses that technology while you're still trying to create studio movies the old-fashioned way with a thousand unionized workers and there's a dude with one other person in a computer that spits out the entire series and like... 